Since we spent our class uh, last week uh, discussing uh, your proposals for the final essays or presentations, mm, so we didn't uh, discuss uh, really uh, the topic of uh, the relationship between uh, uh, theological feminism and uh, liberation theology. So um, I propose to revisit uh, texts uh, which uh, you can uh, find uh, on our platform. Uh, means the three representatives of uh, theological um, reflection on feminism. Just to remind you, Mary Daly, uh, Elizabeth Johnson, and uh, Elizabeth Fiorenza Schuster. Three of them, uh, as you may know from attached uh, books, are uh, aware, in case of uh, Mary Daly, deeply involved in reshaping uh, Christian uh, theology or Christian way of speaking and writing about God. And uh, I hope that we will discuss this, uh, it uh, in our class uh, next uh, this week. Uh, so the, my proposal today, or my short reflections, um, uh, I would like to focus on uh, one uh, book by uh, Elizabeth Johnson uh, for the sake of clarity. It is. Uh, important sometimes to make uh, a focus on uh, one text or, or short texts in order to demonstrate how it works. Uh, so I would uh, propose to you a close reading of introductory chapter and first chapter of Johnson of her book, She Who Is, the mystery of God in feminist uh, theological discourse. Why this book? Um, it was first published in 1992 and was well received uh, and was reprinted. Uh, and the version which I have uh, is uh, the so-called 10th anniversary uh, edition, it means 10 years later. It was published again with the new introduction and uh, a short history of reception. Uh, all this is, uh, of course, uh, very interesting, but uh, not uh, so much for the purpose uh, of, of our class. Uh, what I would like to emphasize is that um, Elizabeth Johnson, as a Catholic nun, is one of uh, the few uh, feminists who uh, remain in the church and even more uh, she um, claimed that uh, feminist uh, theology is uh, really helping her to uh, develop uh, fully uh, Christian and theological uh, system. And what is also very important that she is uh, criticizing in the same moment uh, the traditional theology, saying that this is too narrow, too limited, etc., etc. Uh, I uh, would like to entitle this uh, short piece of my reflections. Uh, uh, s between uh, scotosis and liberation. Mm, I'm not sure if uh, many of you are familiar with the notion of scotosis. Uh, I was not so familiar with it uh, before reading uh, uh, Johnson's book. And liberation is, of course, uh, clear. But scotosis uh, is the opposite of liberation. It's something that you are stuck on your way of thinking, that you are unable, unwilling to, uh, to overcome your narrowness or your uh, fundamentalistic uh, approach to religion. And I think this is a, a very 
uh, fitting description of what uh, Elizabeth uh, Johnson did um, you know, is still doing in, in her uh, books uh, and in her uh, multiply activities. She's giving lectures and teaching, of course, uh, participating on, on conferences and so on. And in all this, uh, she is uh, perceived as a person who is liberated herself, but also helping other to liberate them from uh, narrowness of um, theological thinking. So the definition of scotosis, and I will uh, stop here for those of you who would like to read more. Uh, she actually did not invent this concept, but borrow it from um, uh, also a Catholic theologian, um, uh, Lauren Gang, uh, who uh, wrote a very important book, uh, not yet translated into Polish, but well known in many other uh, languages, namely insight. Uh, insight means how we reach uh, via theological reflection a real deep understanding of, of, of things, so insight. Uh, but also a very important book by uh, Lonergang is um, Methods in, in Theology. This is very important to um, develop the theological reflection according to certain uh, methodological uh, uh, methods exactly. So it means that not everybody who has uh, religious feelings or is articulating some uh, stupidities uh, about God uh, could be considered as the expert in theology. So they are methods who, which are helping us to, to discern between the good theology and bad theology. So what is scotosis? Is the hardening of the mind against unwanted wisdom so that you are stubborn and you don't want to open your mind uh, when uh, new insights uh, are coming or uh, uh, forcing you to, to redefine what you, what you know about uh, history, God, theology, Catholicism, and so on and so on. So, uh, and of course, this scotosis is very uh, diffused or very uh, common between theologians who are not accepting uh, feminism. Feminism as a way to, to reflect, as a way to approach uh, theological questions. So uh, now a few notions, and I will read it and briefly comment, and I hope that it will be helpful for our, our conversation in class. So uh, when, when we perform uh, feminist uh, theology, uh, so according to uh, Elizabeth Johnson, feminist theology results when women's faith seeks understanding in the matrix of historical struggle for life, in the um, uh, face of oppressive and alienating forces. So uh, women are voicing their faith, how they experience. And this is the moment when they are sure that what was proposed to them till now was oppressive. Not only oppressive, but idolatrous. Idolatrous is a very strong uh, the, uh, religious notion. It means that you are following false paths in theological reflection. And here again, uh, Johnson, theology done from this perspective presses a strong critique against traditional speech about God. It judges it to be both humanly oppressive and religiously idolatrous. Why oppressive? 
because you are focusing only on uh, man understanding of uh, the the theological reality of God. Uh, and uh, this, I don't have to, to develop this too much, uh, just uh, think for a while about uh, who is ruling uh, most of the religious institutions, they are men. And uh, history, tradition is used and abused by them in order to marginalize women, to marginalize children, to marginalize those men who don't agree with them. So in case of Catholic Church, they are, of course, ordained men, celibacy, practicing celibacy. So it's very restricted group of men. And they are controlling, so to say, um, tradition, uh, theological discourse, and they are including, excluding those who don't agree with them. So this is a very a strong, oppressive, uh, dominant, hegemonic uh, presence in 2000 of history um, of uh, Christian theology. The same you can say about Jews, uh, rabbis who are controlling uh, Jewish uh, uh, theological discourse. You can say uh, the same about imams uh, controlling um, uh, Islamic discourse, etc., etc. So this is relatively easy to, to, to understand, and I think it's also easy to, to, to connect with our discussion on liberation theology. So this is the new phase uh, of liberation theology that the women are using their uh, feministic ex experience in order to criticize to change, to develop uh, what uh, till now was controlled by men. But perhaps it's not so obvious this another difficult term, namely idolatrous. What it means idolatrous. So I will read it uh, carefully and please listen it. And after in class, we can, we can discuss it. Uh, in so far as male dominant language is honored as the only or the uh, supremely fitting way of uh, speaking about God, it absolutizes a single set of metaphors and obscures the height, the depth, the length and breadth of divine mystery. Thus, uh, it does uh, damage to the very through of God that theology is uh, supposed to cherish and promote. So in other words, uh, we have in um, feministic theology an attempt to completely uh, change traditional discourse about God. And uh, we need, of course, uh, a lot of imagination, theological imagination, and also to, to uh, distance ourselves from what we heard uh, till now about theology, about uh, uh, religious institutions, and so on and so on. And this is not only nothing wrong in criticizing, rejecting, but it is like inner imperative. You should do it uh, because you feel it as a um, voice of uh, God, divine inspiration, which are helping you to reshape your uh, religious imagination. In doing it, you are, of course, entering in uh, different uh, relations with those who are defending traditional way of uh, speaking about God. Uh, you are uh, accepted by those who welcome your new ideas. So it's a very dynamic reality. And I think uh, in our class, 
we could uh, have a really and an enriching, mutually enriching discourse about it. What uh, feminism are really um, contributing to traditional way of speaking about uh, God, about religion, uh, about uh, uh, structure of the religious institutions and, and so on and so on. So I really hope that uh, this my um, very simple actually comments to a few uh, fragments from Elizabeth Johnson uh, book uh, will be inspiring uh, for our discussion.